Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 3J, where we're going to talk about diploids with homozygous phenotypes. So until now, in this module, we've been thinking about what proteins are and what proteins do. And in this and the subsequent lectures in this, the rest of this module, we're going to move forward to connecting what proteins do, ultimately organismal phenotypes, with the genotypes that underlie these. And so in this lecture, we're starting with thinking about homozygous phenotypes in diploid organisms. And we'll continue this in the next lecture. Then we'll think about heterozygous phenotypes and the complexities that this creates. So we're going to start with morning glory flowers. We thought about these already in the context of how gene regulation can change phenotype. Um, so the point of this slide is to tie this phenotype, the production of the blue pigment that makes the flowers blue, with a genotype. So the genotype of a homozygous plant that produces blue flowers is that it has two copies of the wild type allele, the functional allele, indicated by this superscript plus. So we write its genotype as W plus W plus. A white flowered morning glory has two copies of the defective allele. That's the allele with the frame shift insertion. And its genotype we write simply as W minus W minus, with the minus indicating this is a non-functional allele. We can certainly have more complex names if we want to distinguish more complex alleles, but for now we're simply distinguishing functional alleles from non-functional alleles. Now here's another morning glory example. You might know that morning glories actually come in a wide range of different colors, and here we're looking at the genetic difference that's responsible for pink flowers. So here's the pathway that we saw earlier that produces the blue pigment, cyanidin. And this, as we described before, is regulated by the white gene, which is, produces a transcription factor. But knockouts of white make white flowers. That's in the previous slide. But pink flowers are not produced by mutations here. Instead, they're produced by mutations in the P gene. And that knocks out a catalytic, a gene encoding a catalytic end step in the pathway to the blue pigment. And that step being knocked out means that the intermediates are not produced and the blue pigment is not produced. Now, what happens next is parallel to what happens that I described when we talked about phenylketonuria, mutations in the gene for phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now that this part of the pathway is blocked by a mutation in the P gene, the substrate for this enzyme accumulates. It's called dihydrochemferol, not that that matters. And this substrate is converted by a parallel pathway into the bright pink pigment called pelargonidin, which gives the pink morning glories their color. Now, this actually has interesting ecological consequences for morning glories, because the blue normal morning glories are pollinated by bees. So, sorry, I want to write that in white. Bees pollinate these flowers. The mutation that creates pink flowers produces flowers that are pollinated instead by hummingbirds. The white mutation that we talked about before also changes the pollinator status. It just makes the flowers not very attractive to any pollinators, and so these flowers tend to be self-pollinated, which again changes the biology of the plant. So here's a question. What's the genotype of a pink flowered morning glory? Now, oh, I should go back and say, I forgot to emphasize how we write the genotype of these plants. So the genotype of the wild type plant 
is written P plus P plus because it's got a wild type copy of the P allele and the genotype of the pink plant is written P minus P minus because it's got a defective copy of the P allele. Now, we're going to make this more complicated because I'm going to ask you what's the genotype of a pink flowered morning glory. And you might think, well, you already told us the answer, but I only told you part of the answer because now I'm asking you to think not just about its genotype for the P locus, but also its genotype for the W locus. So we're writing the genotype for two genes here. And the right answer is that a pink flowered morning glory is going to have wild type alleles of the W locus and mutant alleles of the P locus. And there's two ways to get to this answer. The first is just that unless you're given specific information to the contrary, you should generally assume that plants, that any organism that you're considering has wild type alleles. So you should always start with that and only discard that hypothesis, discard that assumption, if there's something about the information you're given that makes you think it doesn't. Now, in this case, the pink phenotype is entirely explained by a mutation in the P allele. So there's no reason to assume that it has also has a defect in the W allele. The second reason for saying, well, it must have a functional W gene is because the W gene regulates transcription of the whole path. It actually regulates this step, the chalcone synthase step. If this step was non-functional, if the plant had a defective W gene, the whole pathway would be inactive and the dihydrochemferol would never be synthesized. So no pink pigment could be synthesized anyway. Now I want to move on to think about one somewhat more complex situation, and that is the alleles that control the common ABO blood types. Whenever you get a tr blood transfusion or you're a donor at a blood bank, your blood type is always checked for which of these three phenotypes you have. The phenotypes are determined by measuring what kind of antibodies your blood reacts to. And what those antibodies are telling, they're detecting, is the presence of specific sugars on the red blood cells. So people who are homozygous for the A allele have A-type sugars. People who are homozygous for the B-type allele have B-type sugars. People who are homozygous for the O allele have no sugars on their red blood cells. Now, here's the biochemical molecular basis of this. The ABO allele, the A allele, codes for an enzyme that puts a modified sugar on the surface of red blood cells. And that's the modification that we've drawn as these blue dots. And here's the actual name of the enzyme, alpha 13 n acetyl galactosaminyl transferase, it transfers alpha 13 n acetyl galactosamine onto the surface of the red blood cells. That's what the A allele codes for. The B allele is very similar, but it codes for an enzyme that puts a different sugar on. The, allele, the B allele differs from the A allele by seven substitutions in the coding sequence. That's seven changes to the base pairs. And four of these changes change the amino acids. The other three are silent substitutions. Um, they don't change the amino acid. Four of them do. And together, these changes change the specificity of the enzyme so that instead of taking alpha 13 n acetyl galactosamine, it takes alpha 13 galactose. And that's indicated by the pink blobs on the blood cells. So what about the O allele? Well, the O allele doesn't specify any sugar modification at all because it's a defective gene. So the ABO allele 
differs from the A allele just by deletion of one base pair. Um, that base pair is in what the codon that codes for amino acid 87 of a 354 amino acid protein. So it's about a quarter of a way along the protein. But you know what a one base pair deletion does? It creates a frame shift. So this mutation destroys the coding capacity of all the rest of the protein, and the cell produces a truncated protein that's non-functional. So no sugar modification is put on the ABO blood type alleles. Now, I should also mention that there are many other alleles, many other loci affecting blood type, and there are many minor variations of the A, B, and O alleles. These are important in particular medical situations, but we won't be talking about them in the context of this course. So what have we done? We've begun connecting homozygous genotypes and phenotypes. We talked about three examples, blue and white morning glories, which we talked about earlier, um, blue and pink morning glories, which are defective in a different gene. So the blue and white morning glories the white ones are due to mutation of the W allele from W plus W plus in the wild type flowers to W minus W minus in the white flowers. The pink morning glories result from mutations in a different allele where blue morning glories have the P plus P plus alleles. Pink morning glories have the P minus P minus alleles. Blood types, we have three different alleles, A, B, O, a, A, B, O, B, and A, B, O, O. And then when homozygous, they're responsible for the A, B, and O alleles. Now, in the second lecture from now, we'll talk about the heterozygous phenotypes. What happens when a single individual has two different alleles? But before we do that, we're going to consider a more complex homozygous situation, and that's phenotypes resulting from mutations in the gene responsible for the very common genetic disease, cystic fibrosis. I hope to see you there.